I think this is where it ends for us, Wilson. You better stop bullying that little girl, or else I will make you regret it. Uh, challenging me like this? Are you serious? Approach me and you'll regret it. There's no turning back. I've been waiting for this. Give me your best shot. Really, I need a challenge. Where do I even begin? So he is one of the best designed characters in the entire game. Which is weird, considering that he is one of the first characters introduced to the game. You would think that Nimbinorn would have tried to improve instead of getting worse. The most surprising thing is that I have never seen anyone complain about Zaheer, even though he can do what most characters that people complain about can do. One shot you with no counterplay. See this Carla? Yeah, she had no chance. So why do people not complain about this Indian man? Well, the answer is simple. Skill. With that I mean skill to execute him and skill shots, which all of his abilities are. But I'm getting ahead of myself again. Let me explain why he's able to fly, shoot chakrams and tornadoes. Zahir was once at the brink of death, starving. But fortunately, he found a temple and meticulously survived. That's it. I'm not joking. You want to know why he's able to fly and have the spinning thing behind him? That's not important. You know what's important though? That his morning ritual is to shower and brush his hair. Yeah, Niminaran thought it was more interesting to put that in his lore than where his powers come from. But hey, maybe it comes from his morning ritual. Sadly, I wasn't able to test if that ritual gives you these kind of powers since I'm an Eternal Return player, which means I never shower. Now let me show you what powers that ritual is supposed to give you. First, Zaheer's passive shows you all the corpses in the game for 20 seconds after you kill someone. This is completely useless and you will forget about it in the next 20 seconds. The actual important part about his passive is that whenever he hits an enemy with any of his skills, he marks them with an eye of Ezreal. It not only sounds cool, but is also the most important part of his kit. Marking an enemy gives you vision of them and gives you a pretty big movement speed boost. Which is already great, but if they have a mark on them, you can hit them with another skill to do bonus damage and activate a skill specific effect. So here's Q is the skill you will be using the most. It is his lowest cooldown and highest damage skill, especially if the enemy is marked with an eye. This is what a normal Q is. And this is Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that damage, Nimmelnorm, please! The worst part is that you can't even complain about it. His Q is really difficult to hit. If the enemy has upgraded boots, they can just dodge it. So if you die to it, it's only your own fault. But god is it frustrating get hit by it. Because you know exactly that you misplayed when you got hit. If Aya hits you for a quarter of your HP with a Q, then you can complain about shitty point and click. But if Sahir does it, you simply can't. Now Sahir's W is the reason why his Q is so important. Whenever you hit an enemy with a skill, you gain 2 chakrams, with a maximum of 5. You can probably see the problem now. If you don't hit the enemy, you won't be able to get your W's, which is really bad since your W is the main way you want to apply the eye on the enemy. Now the reason you never want to activate the eye with your W is because it will reduce all of your other cooldowns by 1.5 seconds. So while this is actually amazing for farming, since you can make sure that your cooldowns are always available when you happen to run into an enemy, you would much rather have the effects of the other skills in a fight, since they will actually help in killing the enemy. Speaking of other skills, his E is a tornado and the reason why most people are scared for their lives when they see us are here. If you hit the tornado, it will barely do anything, just knocking them up for a short 0.35 seconds. But if you hit it, while the enemy has an eye on them, you will knock them up for a full second. Usually even that isn't scary, because it is very easy for the enemy to see when you are going to use it and dodge it. So what we want to do is hit the enemy with a W and then run into their face with the movement speed boost from the passive and hit them right in the face with it, making it impossible to dodge. See, it is very similar to real life. If you can see a tornado slowly approaching, you have more than enough time to evacuate and to get out safely. But what if you were to take a nap 
and once you open the door, you get hit by a tornado right in your face. Because that is exactly what we want to do on Zaheer. Hitting them with that tornado will allow you to combo it with your ult. Your ult summons multiple chakrams from heaven. All of these mark the enemy with an eye. Usually it is very easy for the enemy to walk out of the skill. That is why you want to combine it with your E. This way you not only guarantee the most R hits possible, it will also make it very easy to hit your Q, which if you remember, does massive damage if the enemy has a mark on them. Getting one shot by a point blank tornado might seem a little bit unfair until you realize that you had to hit a Q beforehand to be able to get the W's, you need to be able to get the speed buff to guarantee that E. Unless we talk about T-modes, because that is where Zaheer really shines. Usually his problem is hitting a moving enemy. But if you combine it with characters that have guaranteed CC, like Eleven or Nikki, then he becomes a menace, destroying everyone in his vision range. Also, a bit off topic, but holy cow, can we talk about how amazing Sahir's skill icons look? It is very impressive for one of the first characters to have icons that look that juicy. Sadly, most new character icons just look horrible, and it is really disappointing. Do better, Nimmuneuron. Back to combos. A good way to be able to hit his combo more consistently is to queue animals. This will also give you a movement speed boost and W stacks. So optimally, you want to make sure that animals are nearby so you don't run into the risk of missing your Q and standing there like an idiot. Speaking of stacking W, androids also count for that. Meaning you want to go for alpha and omega every single game. If an enemy shows up, you hit alpha with your Q and farm Ws for your one shot combo. But you don't even need to hit that. You can just poke them with WQ and once they retreat to heal up, you can just one shot Alpha or Omega with that exact combo. Zaheer's objective take is actually insane. He probably has the fastest take in the entire game. The best part is, once the enemy returns to contest you, you will have your ult ready again. Since you have been hitting a lot of Mark Ws, which lower your ult cooldown. So if the enemy has never fought a Zaheer, they might think you have no cooldowns anymore and approach you, making it even easier to hit your combo against them. And the worst part is that they can't even complain about it, because they were the ones that got cocky and didn't play safe. While Zaheer's skills are hard to hit and use properly, his builds are very easy and simple. Choosing a weapon doesn't really matter. Shuriken allows you to combo it with your main combo to deal additional damage, and Throw allows you to deny vision of the enemy. In general, I would just advise you to go Shuriken. Build wise, you can basically take whatever you want. I recommend staying away from any build that uses Amp Drone. Look for heavy knee pads or Vampiric and you should be good. Transition wise, you just get my Amp. Prioritize your weapon and try to get either Frost Venom Dart or Skadi. They will slow the enemy whenever you hit them with a skill, making it a lot easier to hit multiple skill shots in a row. Now looking at Zaheer's design, I have to say his design is okay. It's nothing special, but it fits the Eastern style very well. His skin though, oh boy. It might not look that great on the splash art, but in game it is the best skin. It just fits really well and he is barefoot, for the people that are into that. His cyber neon whatever skin is honestly not that good. He loses a lot of what makes him unique and the blue colors just don't fit with his overall design. All in all, great design, 8 out of 10. But now the question that hasn't been answered for half a year. Damn. Is it fun to play Zaheer? No. Zaheer is weird. Hitting stuff on him is a lot of fun. And even if you die, you can't be frustrated most of the time, because if you look back at the fight, you will notice a lot of things that you could have done better. My main issue is that his mobility is very conditional. Actually, all of his kit is very conditional. If the enemy has shoes, you just have to pray that they walk into your queue or that there are still animals around that allow you to stack your passive. So while you can be running around with a lot of items, being in a bad spot or just running into something like a neverpon can just be your doom. And that just isn't fun, especially when there are characters in the game that can do similar stuff a lot better. The worst part is, there isn't even anything I can suggest to fixing that. His kill is perfect the way it is and I don't want him to change anything about it. Which is why it is very weird to say that he isn't fun. But with the changes that they have announced for a lot of characters, he might become one of the most fun characters. Anyway, subscribe, comment which character you want to see next and have a great day. Bye!